Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. This week, doing a uh, bird focus program on the meadowlarks. Not just one bird, but in this case, three. Uh, the meadowlarks are a bird that many, many people recognize. Uh, they are common, or not nearly as common as they used to be, but pretty common grassland birds live in open country, pastures, um, uh, and na formerly of native grasslands. Uh, and their songs are very familiar to people who live in and around that, that type of habitat. But they're, when people start studying birds and start you know, bird watching and, and looking more seriously, and they realize that there are two or have been historically until just recently, two species of metal arcs in our country. Um, that is the Eastern and the Western. And um, as we've talked about uh, in uh, other broadcasts, when it comes to Eastern versus Western in the bird world, you know, uh, we're kind of ingrained in our mind that the Mississippi River is the dividing line between Eastern and Western in the United States. But uh, for birds, it is really the front range of the Rocky Mountains for the most part. Uh, to the Atlantic Ocean is eastern and western is the Rocky Mountains, the west coast. Well, uh, the eastern and western metal arcs are not so easily divided that way, and they do overlap a bit. So um, their their identification can be tricky. Uh, it is, uh, especially visually, um, when you hear them sing, and if you learn their songs, their identification uh, between those two are actually quite easy if you learn the songs. Uh, if you're in the habitat where both of them may occur, like we are here in the middle part of the country, uh, it's very handy to learn their songs because uh, they are uh, easily separated that way. Uh, the western metal arc is the state bird of many states. I think five, is that right? Uh, the western states, the Kansas and uh, many of the western, uh, really the, the high plains areas in the United States. Um, the eastern metal arc, which is in the eastern half of the United States, if you live, I know people watch this program, these programs from all over. Uh, if you live in the really the very eastern part of the United States, it's pretty easy because we don't have western metal arcs there. And I'll get into those maps and we'll show you. But if you do live where they both occur, uh, I want to talk to you about, I got some pictures to show you and things you can look for to separate them out. I'm going to play both of those songs. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about the newest uh, metal arc, just got split out uh, in this past year, uh, called the Chihuahuan uh, metal arc um, that occurs in the southwestern United States. I'll show you that range map. Unfortunately, I don't have any pictures of it, um, uh, but I can tell you uh, visually some of the things you could look for there. But um, the... Uh, it really, if you live in that part of the country and you see what looks like an eastern metal arc, it's, it's probably a, a chihuahuan. So uh, let's get started on that. So the metal arcs. The metal arcs are short, chunky birds. Let's get a picture up here. Um, yeah, the, this is an eastern metal arc uh, singing a song on a post, but they are short, chunky birds. And like most grassland birds, they do have a, a very short, stubby tail. And they're also... Um, familiar, commonly known for when they fly, you see these white outer tail feathers when they fly. They, 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 it's, it's very distinct, especially as they're flying away from you. But they're also known for that bright yellow chest um, with the V, black V on it. Um, this is another wet, uh, eastern metal arc. Um, and they uh, have a, a, a very distinctive song for the grasslands in the eastern half of the United States. And I'm going to play the song from um, the uh, Sibley's app, David Allen, David Allen Sibley's app, which is a wonderful app. Um, and uh, but they have the bird songs on there. So I'm going to play, turn that up a little bit so you can hear it. A very common song that you hear if you're in their habitat in the, in the eastern United States. One of the nicknames uh, for uh, the metal arcs during the Great Depression, especially, were poor man's quail. They are about the size of a, a northern bobwhite, uh, not, not as 
not as robust, um, but they are ground birds and they ground nesting birds. And uh, back in the day, when uh, especially in the Great Depression, when food was such a, a scarcity, um, uh, they were shot and they were eaten. They were uh, hunted uh, to low numbers. And of course, uh, the, gra- the suite of grassland birds uh, are uh, in, in rapid decline because of the conversion of uh, a lot of the the grassland habitat that they require into row crop agriculture and um, the fescue, uh, a grass that introduced that is harder for them to nest in. Uh, but they, they so all grassland birds are in decline in this country, and the meadowlarks are no um, exception to that. They they have been in decline as well. But they're still, you know, if you spend time in especially our area here in, in the middle of the country, um, in uh, especially remnant prairie areas, uh, maybe CRP land, conservation reserve program land that farmers are not farming. Uh, they tend to do quite well with that. And in pastures as well that are that are properly managed, you know, they, they're, they're well managed in uh, eastern meadowlarks. And here is their range map. And this is, I think, from Cornell. Um, and you can see that they occur all across the eastern Oh, almost two thirds of the country, uh, up into the northeast, and then down in Cuba, and 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 even in South America. So the 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 eastern metal arc is quite r- widespread. Well, the next the the other western counterpart for that is the western metal arc, and the I've got a couple of pictures of those. I want to go ahead and show you the range map since the the you, the eastern uh, metal arc frame match was, so was all over on this part of the country. And then here uh, you see that the western metal arc extends it all across the western United States. Like I said, many of these states, it's their state bird. Um, but then you did notice here in the middle, there was overlap. We have easterns and westerns right through this part of the, uh, of the United States. And that's where the identification gets tricky. So you guys out here in the eastern part, you know, you see a metal arc here, a metal arc, you don't you know, worry about the, the separation of the two. But here in the heart of the country, the Western metal arcs, um, they, they sound quite different. And they also uh, have a few subtle differences in, in their appearance that, I, that I'm going to help you with. But I want to play the, the song of the Western metal arc. And it, no, notice how much more bubbly it is sounding than, than the uh, than the eastern metal arc. The metal arc is much more whistly. Let's see. We play one of these. Now compare that to what we heard just a minute ago with the eastern metal arc song. Here it goes again. So you have a far higher whistly sound to the more bubbly sound of the Western metal arc. And while, like I said, there are differences in uh, appearance, so if you get a good look at a metal arc in this part of the country, one of the things you look for is what's known as the malar stripe, which is uh, the uh, oh, kind of the mustache of a bird here. Uh, and in the Western metal arc, you'll see yellow all up here in the, in the malar. We're in, we're in the eastern, it is all white up here. They have a white malar stripe up here. So the westerns, the uh, the yellow bleeds in, and it is, is all up here um, in, in that malar region of the bird. And they have thinner stripes down their sides. And also in western metalarks, they have less white in the tail. So the tail doesn't show as much white as the eastern metalark. Um, has more extensive white in the tail. I think this picture shows, yeah, this shows you a real uh, uh, much better how there's a lot more uh, white in the tail and the stripes on those flanks are darker and and, and larger in size. So you got more uh, and, and deeper, more refined uh, spots on the side. And we know there's very individual variation in birds and you have to be careful with things like the degree of striping and age can make a difference but in the, the Mallar region. But for those, especially if you're new to bird watching and you're wanting to add that Western metal art to your life list or the Eastern metal art to your life list, hearing that song is the concrete way to really tell them apart. Um, t- time of year and, and a lot of them migrate um, uh, in the winter months and go to much further states. 
uh, further states in the south. And then there, uh, a lot of them are returning right now up into this region. One of the things that's really interesting, too, about them as a, as a family, these are members of uh, the, the Blackbird group. So um, the... Sorry, I'm clicking around and I'm hitting the wrong button. Okay, so the blackbird group, which includes uh, obviously red winged blackbirds and grackle, uh, but also Baltimore Orioles, uh, those are all in the same group as as the meadowlark. So a lot of people don't associate them with that group because you know they're not black, but they are members of the, the the that family of birds, and so those are their cousins. I used to, where I used to live uh, for ten years, I was out in really open country uh, here in Missouri and. Um, in the spring, I would have meadowlarks come to my bird feeders and they would be feeding on the ground, uh, all, uh, picking up millet and, and uh, the, the ground throw I would throw down there. Uh, and they would mingle right in there with the, the other birds feeding, but only in the spring. Just, you know, just in that springtime, whenever they were first returning and the conditions were pretty bad and um, the, the high stress. So they would they would have to find a good food source and bird feeders would work that way for them. So they can uh, feed at your bird feeders. They're also kind of mean. Um, I've actually seen them kill a bird, uh, like a house sparrow got too close to them and they whack them with that big bill of theirs and, uh, and actually kill smaller birds and, and goldfinches. I've heard of them killing those as well. So, um, they, just like other members of that blackbird family, grackle do that in the spring. We see that, uh, as well. So, uh, they are you know, shaped like a little football and they, uh, but they have their beautiful songs and they're important parts of our grassland community. Now I did promise the third member, the newest member of, uh, the metal arc family is the Chihuahuan metal arc. And let me pull this map up here. Nope. Not that one. This one. Okay. If you look on this, this is a traditional map, and and there, this species is so new, just been split out, um, and some of the maps were not readily available to me. But if you look on this map, if you look at this this open this self population out here uh, in New Mexico and Arizona, and down here in northern uh, Mexico, this area right here is the range of the Chihuahuan meadowlark. And they are, they for years and years were known as the Lillian's metal arc, which is a subspecies of the Eastern metal arc. That's why their range map is on here with the, uh, this is an Eastern metal arc range map, but this was the Lillian's population that is now its own species. And it looks like a very pale Eastern metal arc, even a more pinkish color on their back. Um, and it is, so it's worth looking up if you, like I said, I didn't have a picture, uh, to be able to, uh, to be able to share with you at this time, hope to get one in the future, but, uh, right now I don't have one, but the Lillian's looks like an Eastern sounds more like an Eastern. Uh, the, the voices are a bit different. So they, they one of the ways they were able to separate them out, but this is a range. So if you live in this part of the world, or you visit go bird watching down here in Arizona, New Mexico, um, even Western Texas, uh, you will likely see a Lillian's slash now Chihuahuan metal arc. So that's the difference there. And they, they're they fascinating birds. They I hope this helps you uh, with uh, separating those out where, where you're at and, and uh, the, listen, learn those songs because that's the most important thing for an, a true identification um, that you remember the yellow malostripe on the, on the Westerns, a white on the Easterns, and then more white in the tail on those Easterns is a, is a good help. And then the darker stripe, uh, side stripes on the Easterns as well. So the metal arcs, good group of birds. Uh, thanks for the idea for the program. Please send in more. If you've uh, got other birds you want me to talk about, I'd be glad to help you out there. Uh, give us a like. If you would share on YouTube, please subscribe. Till then, come on, let's talk birds. <laughs>